Hey, good people. Welcome back to Beauty and the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for another day of Frizzmas. Today I'm doing my November roundup. So if you want to hear about all the products I tried in the month of November, keep watching this video. Let me know what you think. Added makeup is your therapy and your love. If it makes you happy and you want to hang out with someone that feels the same way, definitely consider joining the community. You know, I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. All right, you guys, I hope you are doing well. Uh, whatever time you're watching this video, I hope you are having or have had a wonderful day and that you are taking care of yourself. I am not saying that lightly because I know that the holidays can bring a lot of different emotions for people. Some people are really excited. For some people, it's overwhelming. It can be very sad for me. It, it's a mix of it all. So make sure you're taking care of yourself. I don't say that just to be saying it. Now, we are gonna talk about all the products that I tried in November. I have a pretty good mix, so I'm really excited to give you, you know, some little speed reviews of these products in case there's something that you were wondering about or curious about, so let's get into it. I am gonna start with like the skincare items and then we'll move on to the fun stuff. First, I have this Kiehl's Daily Refining Milk Peel Toner. Now, I did purchase this during the Sephora it was like a friends and family sale. Yeah, it wasn't VIB, but this is a liquid exfoliator. Prior to this, I had the one by Tatcha, which I liked. I, here's the thing with skin products in me. I feel really fortunate because I don't have any specific skin concerns. My skincare regimen is more of a preventive measure than anything. So I, I will say anything by Kiehl's, I, I just love it. And I love this toner for what it's supposed to do, which is to be a gentle liquid exfoliator to the skin. And as it exfoliates, it is supposed to replenish the moisture in your skin. So I'm always looking for a plump, moisturized, dewy look. And I thought this would be a good addition to my skincare routine so I do use this once a day so it is like milky when you shake it all together but as it sits it will separate so I will continue to keep you all posted on this I haven't been using it that long as you can tell now these two products are also from Kiehl's this is the calendula herbal extract toner and then this is the Calendula Deep Cleansing Foaming Face Wash. Both of these products were in my Kiehl's Advent Calendar. And the reason that I opened these, because I do have cleanser already open. I'm using the Youth to the People Antioxidant Cleanser. I took both of these with me to Puerto Rico so that I wasn't bringing full size items or like glass bottles with me. And these did not disappoint. This cleanser is very gentle. The scent is super light. Now this cleanser is for a normal too oily skin type and it does have calendula flower extract in it and it's supposed to soothe and replenish the skin without over drying so I, I enjoyed using this and then the toner let me show you this up close because you can actually see pieces of um, the, the flowers in the toner so hoping you can see that and this also helps to cleanse and soothe your skin so I did enjoy both of these products while I was on vacation and I will continue to use them both. The other product that I tried that for some reason I can't find is the Merit, I think it's called Great Skin Glow Serum and that was sent to me and I enjoyed using that. Now, as I'm saying this, I only used it the one time, but it is a serum. It's not like the Natasha Denona Hygiene that I always talk about that you put on to give you the, the dewy skin right before you put your makeup on. This is something that is supposed to, you know, enhance that glow over time. So I haven't used that long enough to let you know, um, like if it works, but I definitely liked immediately how it looked on my skin. So I don't know where that is. Is, but I definitely would recommend that if you're looking for a glow serum 
Now for complexion, I didn't try anything new, but I did bring out an oldie but goodie. This is my Auric Glow Lust. I actually have two. One is in Sunstone and the other one is in Pyrite. And this is an Illuminizer. What I'm realizing about these though, uh, over time is that what I'm realizing about the Auric Glow Lust is that this can be heavy if you use too much. And I'm saying that because I've tried some other products this year that are a little bit lighter. So now I'm able to compare it a bit and a little bit of this goes a long way for me. The sunstone is actually my skin tone. So if I want to use this instead of the foundation, this is what I go with. But if I want something that's more illuminating, I go with pyrite and I may mix this in with my foundation or just use it before my foundation lightly in certain areas, but you don't need too much. So these are going strong. I have had these for a while now. I don't know if it's been quite a year, maybe so, but they're going strong and I do like to bring them out from time to time. I do think that this is a good product. So I'm glad I haven't forgotten about my glow lusts and that I'm, you know, still using those. So let's actually get into some of the makeup. I usually do my palettes last and let's see, what do I want to start with? Let's start with some eyeliners and I do have three. I actually have four because I have a brand new one that I just tried, but I continue to love the Charlotte Tilbury double ended liners. I do have all five of them and I love both sides. Sometimes I'm in the mood for the matte side. Sometimes I'm in the mood for the metallic and I love having both of those options in one pencil. I brought out my Prance or Prancer liner from ColourPop. This is one of the cream liners and I, I, I know I've had this for over a year, but I can't remember when I used this. I think it was my BYOP video for the Winter Wonderland and it's basically a periwinkle matte blue. I really love this liner. Let me know if you have seen this liner in any other brands. I haven't made any orders from ColourPop this year at all. And you know, just to order the liner, it might not be worth it. So if there's any like drugstore liners or anything like that, let me know if you know any other brands that make a liner in this color. Cause I love this color. I also brought out one of my unearthly cosmetics liners. I can't remember the name immortality liners. And this is the shade gem. She had come out with a whole set of these duochrome liners. And I think she did an excellent job with them. Gem is, let's see, I think it's like a green blue color. And because I have these, I never went and got the Kaleidos ones that they had come out with uh, a while back because these are so good. Just depends on when I'm in the mood to wear something um, this bold. But I did wear it, I think when I was using the eyeshadow palette. What was it called? Dead of Night. I think that's when I pulled this out. I really can't remember, but these are great. There's like about five colors, I think. So she did a good job with these and I was glad I pulled this out uh, to use in the video. But I think my new favorite liners are by Victoria Beckham Beauty. And I'm so mad because she had the 20% off for Black Friday and then it extended for Cyber Monday. And I wanna say even maybe Tuesday, but oh my gosh, I had a whole cart and I wanted to get a couple more of these uh, satin liners. I got the shade Fig, and when I tell you, like, I am lightly, lightly, like, swatching this on the back of my hand. The pigment is instant on your under eye. Like, you don't have to really try hard for it to get in your waterline and stay. This is the first time I've tried one of her eyeliners, and the next time she has a sale, I will definitely get more. This is the satin one. She has, like, satin ones and then the other ones are more metallic, but they are beautiful. Well, at least this one's beautiful. And I love a plum liner. So what I do like about these liners is that on one side you have the liner and on the other side you have a smudger. So you can get that nice smoky look if that's what you're going for. And then these are pretty pricey. They're like 28 bucks. You can get two bucks off if you don't get the sharpener. Don't get the sharpener because you know we have plenty of sharpeners. So don't get that. So next let's talk about blush and 
Oink, oink. First, we're gonna talk about the Merit Flush Balm Cheek Color. I have the shade Beverly Hills, and this was gifted to me with the Great Skin Serum. This is so beautiful, like if you don't put foundation on and you wanna wear blush, but you don't want it to look, like you know how sometimes with certain blushes, if you don't have foundation on and then you put the blush on, it doesn't look right? Well, that's what I've encountered at times, but I don't encounter that with a balmy blush like this one or the Laura Mercier one, which I will talk about in a minute. This is a very sheer wash, and I think that no matter what color you get, it is just going to provide a little bit of a tint. It's not gonna be overly pigmented. You're not gonna look like a clown. It's just going to be a natural look if you're trying to do a, what no makeup makeup look. This is not gonna give you a powerful punch. It's gonna give you some dew and a little bit of color. And I like that. That's kind of what I've been going for a lot lately. So I was really happy to finally try this product because I did have my eye on it a while back and then I just kind of forgot. Like so many things come out. So I just never got around to trying it. The Laura Mercier blush. Oh my gosh, this is another brand. I have blushes in my cart. I wanted to try the Caviar Eye Sticks. I woke up, that sale was gone. They were having 30% off, and this is the Tinted Moisturizer Blush in the shade Southbound. And I've had this for a while as well. I wore it, and then I stopped wearing it, and then I brought it back out, and I was like, I really love this. I also have a liquid blush from Rare Beauty. That blush is so, so, so pigmented, whereas this one and the one from Merit, they really are like tints. And this one has the same consistency as like a tinted moisturizer, and that's what it's called, tinted moisturizer blush. And I love the shade Southbound. They have so many nice shades. Now, the Laura Mercier blush is gonna give you more color than the Merit one. So I think between the Merit and the, the Laura Mercier, I would go with the Laura Mercier. And the Merit one is a little like stickier, balmier, where this one really feels like a lotion. So I'm a huge fan. I don't know, Sephora's having, or it might be over now, like a 20% off one-time thing, and I almost wanna get another one of these, but I'm like, I could have had 30% off. But I was playing around as per usual. but you know what, that's okay, because I ended up saving money. But I, I really love this. I know I'm gonna use this, this up completely. The blush I have on, by the way, is also by Laura Mercier, and it's a bit heavy because I didn't clean off my brush, and I, I don't know when this video is going up, but you may have already seen August do my makeup. Well, some of that blush was left over, so the blush is a bit heavy, but the Laura Mercier uh, blush I have, it's like a rose glow blush. It's called something berry, I can't remember, but this is another really nice one, but this is like a powder. I love this cream one a little bit more than that though. Yes, or the moisturizer. Now an oldie but goodie that I continue to use every month without fail is Paradise Glow, the blush duos. Now at one point these were $25. I'm not getting any more of these, but if you were interested, I feel like that would be the time because these are expensive. You know, Pat McGrath is a luxury brand, but Paradise Glow is just, it is, I don't even know what to say. When I wear this one, I don't use any bronzer. I actually haven't been wearing bronzer much at all lately. You can kind of use the side that looks a little more like Desert Orchid if you want it to be a little lighter, or you can just take the Paradise Venus side if you want it to be darker, or you know, do a nice mix, which is what I tend to do. But this is just one of my favorite blushes from her out of all the blushes because Desert Orchid was really my favorite, but I think this one is gonna be first place. This palette by Adept is so good. This is the Ayana palette. I think the other one I have is the Stella palette. I probably talked about it in my last video. I hope I did. I think I did. But I continue to use this. I love like that bronzy, glow and that's what this palette is i love the bronzer in here it is like the perfect neutral bronze it's not too dark or too light for me it is perfect and then you have these shimmers 
these are just gorgeous that you can use as toppers blush toppers or just use it to just kind of highlight in this area i think that adept cosmetics did a great job with all four of the palettes as i said i have two of them but job well done when i first heard that they were coming out with face palettes i was like oh this is not something that i'm going to really be interested in but i am glad i gave them a try and for 22 dollars for the adept formula i think that that was really reasonable so i know these sold out and were restocked so if you were interested in whether or not these are good yes they are i really love them the last two products i'm going to talk about are from unearthly cosmetics i have one of the incandescence highlighters this is the shade bass these are really nice serum highlighters they are smooth they do have small glitter flecks so everybody may not like that but what i notice is that from afar you don't really see that glitter you mostly see kind of like that do but i have to be in the mood to want to use a highlighter like this these days i have been going for more of the natural highlight look so this isn't something that i go for all the time it's just something that when i'm in the mood for a specific type of highlight these are great i like how they dry down and i like the formula of them it would be nice if she came out with a highlighter that kind of didn't have these glitter flecks i'm thinking like the lisa eldridge highlighter like that like that's kind of what these remind me of in a way but the finish of them on the face is is definitely different because the lisa eldridge highlighters are really natural looking whereas these are going to give you a little more of that bling i will be talking about the highlighter from the black panther collection but i'm just going to talk about that whole collection together so i just wanted to mention that but lastly i have my blushes from unearthly cosmetics these are so great the shades that i used in november i used bloom i used burst I may have used Tangy, I cannot remember, but I really liked this blush range that she came out with. I just felt like it was really versatile. So I always come back to using these at some point and I definitely look forward to any other face products that she's going to come out with in the future. This palette is also from an Earthly Cosmetics. So yeah, I, I'm glad I pulled these blushes out. With the amount of makeup I have, sometimes it's, no a lot of times it's easy to forget you know what you have so i really do try to make sure i'm rotating things out so these are still great all right so now we're going to talk about lip products so first let's start with let's start with makeup by mario i still continue to use these moisture glow plumping lip serums i find that they're nice especially if i've been wearing matte lipsticks sometimes it's nice to just come back with uh, something that's hydrating i don't know if these are like special or anything like that but i do like them like i'm not gonna buy any more <gasps> remember when he was coming out with one a week that made me so mad y'all remember that over the summer it was making me real mad i do have two of these and i do enjoy them i continue to use them i like how it gives you like Hey, Marky. What's up? I got you on Vegas. Huh? I got you on Vegas. When? I said January. We're not going to Las Vegas until July. Uh, I want myself. You want to go by yourself? Yes. Oh, um, you're, you can't, what, where are you going to do? I could to relax. You're going to relax? I got my suitcase. And your you want to go alone without me? Yes. So I think you have to be 13. Okay. But you can't like check into a hotel or anything like that by yourself. High school? Mm -hmm. I, not even high school. I think you have to at least be 18. What if I took you to Vegas and then I we had like a room where like you had your own part and I had. You to be 18? 18 is when you're an adult. But here's what I'm saying. What if we went to Vegas and like you had your own room and I had my own room, but our room's like connected in the middle? I'll go to Casa What? I'll go to Casa 
You going to where? Costa Rica. Costa Rica? Yeah. I'll get, Marky, I'll come talk to you in a minute about all these places. I want to go to Costa Rica too. Starting to get a little out of hand here. Um, you get on one trip and now, now we're feeling ourselves. Okay, I'm gonna have to get them together. Um, let me finish this up. So I like the shine that this has. It does have that plumping uh, feel. So it's like, um, I always call it peppermint. It's not really strong or anything like that. Nothing that makes me not wanna wear it, but I'm gonna continue using this. But these, these are the Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink Liquid Lipsticks. These are so good. They came out with some other colors and I was supposed to do a video and hopefully it will be during Christmas. <sighs> this is the shade Extra. I love these. Now I will say that when these dry down, they do continue to have a bit of a sticky feel, but they don't really transfer. It's a bit odd. You may not like that. I feel like either you're gonna like these or you're not gonna like them, but I love them and I really love the colors. I still haven't tried all the new shades, but I'm excited too. And I love, I love all the ones I've tried so far. These are definitely a yes. And here we have the Gucci lipstick. This is the shade Nelly Cherry. What I notice about these as I continue to wear them, cause I have this one and they met in Argentina. They met in Argentina, I think I like better than Nelly Cherry. I love the shade Nelly Cherry, but I don't know why I'm feeling like these are a little patchy. They're still nice, but they're not nice for the price. They're nice if you can get them on sale but even the sale is still a little high. So I'm not sure if I like highly recommend these. Like I don't recommend them like I recommend this uh, Maybelline. I really recommend the Maybelline, but I'm not sure if I recommend this in the same fashion. So I'm still wearing it. These though, these are the Unearthly Cosmetics liquid lipsticks. So nice. She came out with new shades in these and these are satin. I think there were, yeah, there were seven shades and like four out of the seven were just like right up my alley. A couple of them were too red. There was one that was like super, super light, but I know I can make it work, but there was not one bad shade in the house. They are so beautiful. They are so beautiful, not patchy, smooth, dry down nicely, not overly dry or anything like that. So highly recommend these from Unearthly Cosmetics as well. And last but not least, we have Lisa. I did get two of the new velvet lipsticks. I got Sorcery and Enchantment. Enchantment is not available right now because I don't know where it is, but Sorcery is, and I got the matching liners. Sorcery is a beautiful shade. I think I've decided though that I still like Velvet Affair more than Velvet Sorcery. Velvet Affair is just like my number one, but this one might be my number two. And the liners are great. Um, they're expensive, but I feel like they're really long lasting and I enjoy them. I enjoy. So I did do a video on the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks and one of the palettes. So we'll be talking about that palette in a second. And then all of my other Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, I think I have videos on those too. That's it for lips. I do have the Black Panther uh, two products from the Wakanda. I will talk about those in a second. Now let's talk about eyeshadow palettes. I'm gonna start first with my Winter Wonderland BYOP. I was very proud of myself because I did come up with a palette that encompassed a, a lot of blue shades. And I actually really liked the looks that I came up with. This really solidified that I don't hate blue eyeshadow. There are so many shades of blue and I think I just had to find the right ones. So I'm getting better at picking those out. I really enjoyed using these shades together, especially with the browns. I thought the looks came out really, really nice. So I was happy to pull these shades out. I haven't been buying a whole lot of eyeshadow singles this year. So really using them makes me feel happy. I didn't buy any singles for Black Friday. The last group of singles I bought was the November bundle from Sydney Grace. I like those monthly bundles. I'm thinking about getting those though. I, I do like them. Uh, Sydney Grace is just, 
that's a side note. Don't need to talk about more stuff to buy. I am enjoying using my single shades and I continue to enjoy the BYOP series because it just allows me to be creative and it's fun. So I don't think I talked about Thomas. This is the Apray Ski Palette. Now, this is great for one and done type looks. I don't think this is his best you know, work and that's okay. But you're not gonna get a bunch of variety out of this, but I do enjoy like the peachy shades. Every time I've worn this, it's been a quick look for work and I've just used one shade. It's good for that for me. Is it worth the price? Probably not. That's why I was glad I was able to get it 20% off, but definitely not worth it for the regular price. I have yet to try these wet. I'd love to see if we can get these shades to pop a little bit more if they are wet. So keep you posted on that. But I do really like these tones and I do like the Tom Ford eyeshadow formula. I think it is nice, but it's also nicely priced. Nicely priced, not in a good way. This is a palette I'm gonna have to do a lost review video on. This is the Huda Beauty Empowered palette. And again, I use this for a quick look for work. A lot has changed since I haven't been filming in the morning. And that's why I feel like I get palettes and I'm not reviewing them or using them on camera because I'm not getting a chance to. So uh, a couple takeaways from there, or the main takeaway is stop buying all these palettes because you're not using palettes the way that you used to. And I really need to listen to that. I'm gonna have to rewind that in this video and listen to what I'm saying because I am not having the time to record in the morning. That's when I was doing the bulk of my filming. I was pretty much recording every single morning one look and then putting each of those looks together to make a video. So that's why you haven't been seeing palette rotation videos or you may see that I bought a palette and you're like, hey, are you gonna do a look with this? It is really, really a struggle. But I, this was a palette I definitely knew that I wanted. I just haven't had a chance to play with it. So I did a quick look for work. It wasn't anything that really showcased what this palette could do. It was probably like two shades and that's kind of what I've been doing. So it really sucks, but it is making me take a even harder look at my collection to figure out like where am I going with eyeshadow because I don't know 720 is really early for me to be at work and I can only get up but so early to film to get the boys together to do all the things that I need to do but I think that this empower palette is probably the same quality as the rose quartz from last year and the naughty nudes from 2020 and if that's the case, I am gonna enjoy this palette. I do like the color story. Oh, I'm missing a palette. I'll be right back. So I did try both of the new palettes from Unearthly Cosmetics. We have the Dead of Night palette, which this palette, another surprise for me because I did not think that I was going to really go for this palette the way that I did. It is absolutely beautiful. She did a great job. And even though these are the shimmers that are a little more densely packed, they are really beautiful. I just, I love the looks that I came up with. Now, unfortunately, Unearthly Cosmetics is not taking any more orders for the remainder of the year because they are working on fulfilling a lot of the orders that um, they already have. So that's unfortunate, but they will be back. Honestly, I was thinking I might have liked the Daily Grind palette. And I remember before seeing it, knowing that the Daily Grind was gonna be kind of this everyday color story, but this is not it for me. I do love orange eyeshadow, so I automatically thought that I was going to like this palette more than the Dead of Night palette, but I don't. I think the Dead of Night palette definitely tops this one. This one is really bright. It's giving me more of the summertime vibes, definitely not everyday vibes. The Dead of Night palette is giving me like that galactic goodness that I really do enjoy from time to time. So that was a surprise for me. But both palettes are great. The quality, as always, is excellent. So I was really happy to try these out. Let's talk about the Charlotte Tilbury 
pop shots, something else I'm wearing to work because it's easy and convenient. And I have diamond eyes and emerald eyes. Diamond eyes is like this light champagne and emerald eyes is a beautiful green. I mean, these are both beautiful, but they're beautifully overpriced. I definitely would not pay full price for these. I still am a tad interested in the smoky quartz one, but it sold out. So, but I think Charlotte Tilbury did a nice job with these and it was something different for her brand. But if you own indie eyeshadow, indie eyeshadow palettes, or even just singles, you have these. So don't feel like it's something different or special because it's not. It's not. Notoriously morbid. We don't always. Oh no, I hear Marky, I'll be back. So Marky's in there watching people, I guess, take planes and cruises. Now he's telling me somebody's tummy hurts because they're seasick. So he's in there crying. <sighs> so Notoriously Morbid had put up some leftovers of palettes and this was one of them i wasn't really sure what they were gonna have but i was feeling like i knew it wasn't a restock but this one i don't think any of the palettes that they put up that were left over lasted long at all and when i found out that this was going to be one of the palettes that was going to be uh, on the site i did finally do a video this is a great palette and one of the things that i recently learned is that if these shades are too sparkly for you or you want to do your face makeup first the Dora line mixing medium really works wonders. The Dora line really changed the consistency of the shadows and it took any issues that I had with fallout completely away. So in addition to these shadows being beautiful anyway, that was just an added bonus. I continue to love Notoriously Morbid. They are just such a great brand. Some people have been reaching out to me and asking me if their shipping takes a long time and I'm not sure what's up with that. I really hope that Notoriously Morbid will realize like how many people love their brand and that they will begin to make more palettes and just understand like they have a really great fan base. And sometimes I feel like they don't know how much they're loved. So hopefully there will be some improvements on that end. Now let's talk about Lisa and these palettes. This may be an unpopular opinion, but I think they are really overpriced. Are they nice? Yes, I think they're beautiful, but they are overpriced. I think $68, I don't even know what we're paying for because these are not weighty palettes, which I'm glad they're not because nobody wants to carry heavy palettes around. They're small, compact, and I think that's really nice if it's something that you wanna bring with you somewhere, but I don't think they're worth $68. So I do have the sorcery palette right here, which I did create some beautiful looks, but I don't think the formula is anything special. I don't think it's anything that we haven't seen. I also have the Cinnabar palette, which I have not filmed yet. I've played around with this a little bit just for some simple looks. And I think this palette is great for that. She has these matte formulas. One is a seamless matte and then the other one is a velvet matte. The velvet matte is supposed to be like almost like that cream to powder feel, but the velvet matte and the seamless mattes pretty much feel the same to me. And if you like Natasha Denona cream to powder mattes, you already have something like this. I already have something like this in the bronze palette. This was really not necessary for me to have, but I just had to have it because it was called Cinnabar. That's my silliness. I think the sorcery palette is great. And you know what? When Someone like Lisa Eldridge is putting out a new product like, like that. You know, me f reading up on Lisa Eldridge and things like that. Like I definitely wanted to try it, so I don't regret it. It's just not my favorite. I also think that it's nice that you can customize the palette, but right now she does not have the palette itself, the component for sale. And it might be something that she does in the future, but if you want to create your own palette, you can't right now. You just have to swap within the palettes that you have, which, you know, that's not really effective for a lot of people, especially if you want to build your own. So I would say I'm sure she's going to come out with the component by itself, but I still think it's really pricey. Obviously, you're paying for the name. The quality is great. 
I'm just saying that I have this quality already in palettes that don't cost as much. And last but not least, we're gonna end this video off with MAC Cosmetics. And before I talk about the Wakanda palette, I'm gonna talk about the Feast Your Eyes palette because this was the first palette that I have from MAC that had this type of cream formula, which I think is really nice. This palette was like highly sought after, I feel like. And I'm hoping that the Whitney Houston palette that's coming out soon is gonna be, well, the formula of the Wakanda palette because I think that one is even better than this one. So you have these like cream to powder mattes and the shimmers. The shimmers in this palette are pretty soft and sheer, but they do make really nice looks. The Wakanda palette though was really a surprise for me. I think I got this palette more so because it was Wakanda forever, not really for the color story because I haven't been going for super colorful looks in the first place. But what I did enjoy about this palette was that these shades, even though they may appear deep in the pan, they are so easy to diffuse and make light. Really, really beautiful shades. And they're so creamy. I don't know, I was really pleasantly surprised with this palette. So yeah, the palette's really nice. I still haven't seen the movie, but I was really impressed with it. Like the way the shadows blended and worked together, I just thought it was, I thought it was really nice. The standout piece in the collection, which actually cost more than the palette, was the highlighter. And this is something I was gonna pass on and I'm so glad that I changed my mind. I got the lighter one in Royal Challenge. And this is actually the skin finish. Look at that beautiful embossing on there. And this embossing is raised, like it's not gonna go away after a one-time use, which I think is great. It's really, really uh, smooth. If you can see it there, let me find some other place to put it. Yeah, super smooth. I'm really glad I got this shade because originally I wanted the deeper one. I think that one might've been a bit too deep, but this was really nice. I'm so glad to have this. Packaging isn't anything like luxurious, but it's a really nice highlighter. I did get the gloss. This is called Love Me Liquid Lip Color, and this is the shade Show Off. So it's not a gloss, it's a liquid lip. This is a great color. Like I love this color. And then lastly, I have the lipstick. The lipstick I've got is in the shade Royal Integrity. It's a matte. I don't think I'm in love with this lipstick formula and I'm not really in love with the color. It's beautiful, but I'm definitely not wearing this a lot. I should have gotten the lighter shade. I just was trying to get something different because I have so many like nude shades. I was just trying to get something a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I might end up seeing if my sister wants this because I'm probably not gonna wear it too much. And I wanna say that it didn't really uh, adhere to this part of my lip where I really do need that extra pigment. So I might see if my sister wants that, but I, I definitely liked the liquid lip color, the highlighter, as well as the palette. All right, y'all, so that is my November roundup. Those are all the things that I tried. I think I covered it all. So let me know what you think about the products I've mentioned. Let me know if you've tried any of them or let me know what you've been using lately. I really enjoy talking about makeup favorites and fails, and I know that I'm often giving a first impression, so I do think it's necessary to come back and share how I'm still feeling about them. You know, sometimes I'm really excited and then the hype dies down and it's like, mm, it really isn't that great, you know what I mean? And there are things that if I don't do this roundup, I may never talk about again because I'm not necessarily using them on cameras. So I do want you to know that I make an effort to really use the things in my collection. So thank you so much for hanging out with me for another day of Frismas. I hope you are enjoying it so far. We have really just started. So I hope this was therapy for you. It always is for me. So until I see you again, which is tomorrow, make sure you are being gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself nice, stay safe, and I'll see you then. Bye.